All right, so on to number two. We are given this box here, and we want to compute the entry and exit point. So entry and exit T value of this box for array with origin, negative three, four, five, and direction one, negative one, negative two. So as we saw in lecture, the general procedure of intersecting with a 3D box is to look at each of these slabs individually. So a slab would be this front face and the back face here. That would be the XY slab since it's only along the Y and X axis. And similarly, this face of the box right here would be the ZY slab. This would also be part of the ZY slab. And then we have the top and the bottom which are along the X and the Z axis. So we want to look at each of these slabs individually and we want to treat them like planes and intersect with each of these planes in order to determine at what time T would this ray intersect with every face of this box. Okay, and then once we have that, we'll have way too many t values, maximum of six t values, and then we need to do uh, an extra kind of processing step in order to determine the actual entry and exit point. So we'll take the intersection of all of these t values and determine at what like interval, at what t interval, uh, is the ray within all of these faces. So we also saw in lecture this plane intersection test was a little simplified since these are axis aligned boxes. So the equation's right here. Um, and let's just start computing these t values with all of these different slabs. So let's start with yz. Um, first we will take t equals py. So py, we have two corners here, so we're going to do this computation twice. So let's start with our positive corner. So py will be 2 minus oy, that will be 4, divided by dy, which is negative 1. So that will be 2. And then we will also take our negative corner and repeat the same process. So we'll have negative 2 instead of positive 2, and then the values for O and D will be the same. And that will be 6. Okay, and then we'll just repeat the process for the other slabs. So let's do it with the Z slab. So we'll take PZ, let's start with positive 2, OZ, that's 5, sorry this is a minus 5, divided by negative 2. That will give us 3 over 2. And then we'll do the same computation with the negative corner. So negative 2 minus 5 divided by negative 2. That's going to give us 7 over 2. And then lastly, with x, we're going to have 2 minus negative 3, so that's plus 3, divided by 1, which is 5. And then dx2 equals negative 2 plus 3 divided by 1, which is just 1. 
Okay, so now we have two t coordinates for each of these axes. So for each of these like axis aligned boxes. Um, and then we want to look at the intersection of all of these intervals. So for this x slab, as you can see, there's this slab that is closer to us and then the slab that is farther from us. And the ray is between these two slabs when it is at t that's greater than 1 and less than 5, less than or equal to 5. Because see, we got 5 and 1 for our t values here. So at any time where t is between these two values, we're inside this slab. But that's only for one of the axes. We have to look at all three of them. So what we want is the interval where t is between all of these values. So we want t also to be between 2 and 6 and 3 over 2 and 7 over 2. Okay, so now if we just kind of combine these intervals, we'll end up taking the max value of these three here. Oh, so this will be max 1, 2, 3 over 2. And then we'll take the min of our upper bounds. So then we'll have min, oh, hold on a second, 5, 6, 7 over 2. Okay? And so that'll give us 2 and 3.5. So our entrance, our entry point, will be at time where t equals 2, and our exit is where 3 t equals 3.5. And so if we want the actual points at which we enter and exit, then we need to put these t values in our ray equation. So we would just have, this is our ray equation, since they gave us an origin and a direction, plus 2, or negative 1, negative 2. This will be our entry, and our exit is where we have t equals 3.5, and I just ran out of space here, so I'm just not going to write it out. Cool.